Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. And in today's video, I'm going to go through all the puzzles I got for the month of September. I don't have quite as many as the August haul, but there's still a fair few here, so maybe get a snack and get comfy and let's check out everything I got. So I'm going to go through these in groups based on where I purchased them. So the first group is going to be everything I purchased from Amazon.com.au. I would say the majority of these um, were not local, but they came from like the US or UK. Um, so most of the time I end up getting a lot of these US UK brands from Amazon just because either I can't get them here or they're really expensive. But also I have Amazon Prime, so I tend to get free shipping on pretty much everything from overseas that I order. Um, so yeah, just makes it really worthwhile um, and just couldn't get any, like I said, if I even if I could get them here, I don't think I could get them for that price. So yeah. Um, so anyway, let's get into this. Uh, so first up, we have a few from Buffalo Games. So this first one is a thousand piece. Um, it's part of the night and day series. And this one's called Wild West Camp. Um, so basically this one's like a Western, Wild West Western setting. Um, I guess it's like meant to be old, like, well, you know, kind of when these like old Westerns took place because it's got that sort of old, like, um, what do you call it? Like horse and kind of carriage, but like with the fabric over the top, uh, like you see in Westerns, but I don't know what it's called. Um, or caravan, like a horse and caravan. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's just got some like really, I guess some, it's got heaps of like fun details in it, um, including a random giant box of kittens, which I mean, that's a pretty, that's a good enough reason to get it anyway, I reckon. But yeah, I've had this one on my wish list for ages, but only recently came into stock. So happy to have it. Um, yeah, I just like it. It just looks fun. I kind of like this sort of like iconic cliche of the Western and, um, yeah, so I think it'll be really fun to do. And the other thing is it says there's 19 hidden objects. So yeah, among all the details are 19 things to find. Um, so I don't know, I guess that just adds a bit more fun to your puzzling experience. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the colors and um, the imagery and all the details. So yeah, looking forward to this one. Um, up next, I've got a couple of ones featuring cats. Originally, I thought they were actually both from the cat series but that's not right only one is so the first one is from the cat series and it's called props cupboard and it's 750 pieces um yeah so basically it features um yeah like a sort of i guess what you think of as an old-fashioned like theater props cupboard so you've got like mannequins with wigs and masks and like different like has a hell like a roman i think style helmet um there's like lots of costume jewelry and like odds and ends, anything that you, I guess, use in theatre. So it looks really fun and the cats are just beautifully illustrated. Um, this is by, I think, Steve Re Reed somewhere on here. Oh, uh, yeah, Steve, Steve Reed, I think that's how you say his name. Um, but he does lots of these, like, very kind of realistic style um, cat pictures with, like, so the fur looks very realistic and the facial expressions just look very natural and realistic as well. Um, and they always just look so beautiful. So I have a few in my collection done by him actually. So yeah, happy to have another one. And I think this one's just, just cute and fun. Um, yeah, just really like it. And another one which features a cat, but it's from a different series. So this is Buffalo Games as well, but it's from the series Cities in Color, which I haven't actually heard of before. Um, and the puzzle is called Mademoiselle Cat. And this one features the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And it's just a very pretty, vibrant, uh, puzzle so the cat looks very cute and um, you know it's obviously a very um, well fed well looked after and spoiled kitty living um, in a beautiful Parisian apartment with a perfect view of the Eiffel Tower um, I think all cats wish they could have this um, so yes I wouldn't mind being this cat but yeah the flowers the colors of the flowers just look really beautiful and even like the sort of sky um, like behind the Eiffel Tower just yeah lots of lots of really beautiful uh, sort of rich and vibrant details and a cat so I had to get it and then next up is a puzzle that I came from amazon.com.au but it was actually um, 
came from a local seller. So this one is by the company which is called Pennywinks and they're a brand new Australian company. Well, they've been out less than a year, but they've only just released this puzzle, which is called the Witch's Lair. So yeah, their very first puzzle. And I actually just recently did a video review on it, trying it out. Spoilers, I really enjoyed this puzzle. Um, so I think I can link up here to the video. If not, I'll link it down below. Um, so check that out if that's something you're interested in. But yeah, so this puzzle features a uh, kind of like a spooky fantasy setting, like the witch's lair. So there's witches and like goblins and cats and all sorts of like potions, all sorts of like witchy, spooky things in this puzzle. Um, but like drawn in a very fun and whimsical way. So yeah, I really enjoyed the artwork in this. Um, I'm actually doing it again right now for like a Instagram puzzle along. So me and a couple of other Instagrammers are all doing this puzzle and sharing our progress together. So yeah, having a lot of fun doing it for the second time and can definitely see myself doing this again. Um, and I think it, like it's a perfect sort of Halloween spooky puzzle. Also, I love, just really love the colors in this. Like some of my favorite colors are these like pinky magentas and purples and it's like pops of bright green. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely enjoyed and enjoying this puzzle. Um, up next is one from Ebu, and this just really caught my eye. Um, this is a thousand pieces and it's called the Alchemist Cabinet. Um, I love Ebu puzzles, but I found that this style just sort of caught my eye because it's quite different to a lot of their style puzzles, I guess. So a lot I feel like are done in more of a arty, painterly, kind of way but found this one is like I don't know like it gets a lot more structured um, I mean I like both but I probably prefer this sort of style a little bit better because I find the painty ones like kind of hard <laughs> so just just from a personal like point of view um, but yeah they have beautiful puzzles um, and this one's no exception and basically obviously the cat caught my eye you know but I just really love like all the de like there's a picture on the back that I'm looking at. Yeah, I love all the details like sort of these old fashioned cabinets with sort of like weird curiosities and sort of spooky and weird and wonderful things like skeletons and shells and feathers and butterflies and um, even the wallpaper kind of I guess is sort of meant to be reminiscent of like William Morris like that arts and crafts style kind of wallpaper so it's all so many little details packed into this and kind of makes you think of like maybe this is a room in some big old British mansion or something like that so yeah I just really really like it and love the details and can't wait to do this one um, so up next is another one with lots of fun illustrations uh, this one is called XYZ blocks and it's by genuine Fred um, I've done a few genuine Fred puzzles and they're they're really good quality um, the pieces are like quite nice and they always have really they always have really cool art artworks and done by like a range of artists so this one as well is no exception um oh and this one it's a thousand pieces but it's actually like a long kind of landscape size so hopefully it fits on my a1 puzzle board but we'll see um, but basically it's like the abc and um a lot of the letters have like a corresponding illustration to go with that letter so one that I think is hilarious is for L is litter box and it's a kitty cat doing its business. Um, and like what C is like corn dog, all sorts of weird, quirky, whimsical sort of like uh, illustrations. Um, but one thing I really like about it is that the colors and sort of the illustration style is very like reminiscent of sort of like vintage like advertising um so like maybe 40s or 1950s kind of like those old ads um so yeah i just really yeah just look like a lot of fun and i'm really looking forward to that one um so up next is one again that i when i ordered it actually came locally but i don't know if it is an australian company or not um anyway it's called the company's called koala puzzle box and i and the puzzle's called the Trippy Rooster, um, and it's 1,000 pieces. And I saw someone talk about this on Instagram that they randomly found it while looking for weird and unusual puzzles on Amazon. And I was like, well, this 
speaks to me. It's like bizarre, strange, trippy rooster. I think, it, yeah, it's like this like weird psychedelic strange rooster with like all sorts of weird little details. Like there's a unicorn, there's Batman. There's like just truly bizarre and yeah, trippy rooster is right, I would say. Um, unfortunately, the image on the front of the box is not the whole image. So if I can find a full size image, I'll put it up there or it might just be the front, but essentially it's a rooster, but it, yeah, it's made up of all these like weird, strange details. But yeah, I love the colors. I just love how strange and quirky it is. Um, so I thought I'd get it and try it. And I've yeah, never heard of this brand. So I'm interested to see what they're like, but from what I saw with reviews, like sound like it sounded like the quality was pretty good. So yeah, looking forward to trying this one out. Um, up next are a couple of like, you know, puzzles from one of my absolute favorite artists. Um, so these are by the artist, um, I believe she's from the UK, uh, Elena Essex and her art style is just stunning and beautiful. So this first one is actually a round puzzle and it's called Bird Paradise 1000 Pieces. And it's just, just stunning. Like, um, I follow her, her on Instagram, so I'm always like keeping my eyes peeled for what she has coming next. Um, before these, I think this came out earlier this year or maybe late last year, she had like a sort of beautiful puzzle that came out, which was like a sort of rainbow gradient of all these different like animals and creatures and insects. And it was just beautiful. It's one of my favorites and I'm like never, never letting it leave my collection. And I think these couple will also stay in my collection forever if, as far as I can help it. So yeah, this one, I just, yeah, it's just all birds and flowers and it's just, yeah, just really stunning. Like the colors are just beautiful. So don't know what else to say about it, except I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, it's already one of my favorites. I, based on the quality from the last one, I think it will be nice. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then, yeah, the other one she put out, so she put these out around the same time. Um, this one is Night Reef, also a thousand pieces. And yeah, also just stunning, like just, she sort of is really good at doing these like beautiful gradients. And this one, yeah, you've got like these beautiful teals and blues and purples and pinks and coral colors. And it's just all, yeah, so uh, Night Reef. So it's all like from looking at the picture on the back, like fish and coral and like all sorts of it's basically an underwater scene um, but yeah just the patterns and the colors are just beautiful so also on my to-do favorites list so i can't wait to do this one sometime um up next another couple of favorites um so i got these next couple from the company grateful house and there or i actually also recently did a um video reviewing one from this series so th these two are from by the artist dolk and grateful house has a quite a range of puzzles but they've got three in this collection so the one i did the video on is the third in the collection um and spoilers again i really enjoyed that puzzle and thought the quality was really good and the artwork's beautiful and yeah i'm assuming these are going to be like that where Already I can see just beautiful packaging and beautiful artwork. So this one here is, uh, th yeah, so this is number one and it's called Carousel. And yeah, the artwork by Dolk is it's very like surreal, not abstract, but yeah, very surreal and like fantastical, um, something like, like a dream. So this one's like this giant hippopotamus and sort of it's swimming through the water and some like all sorts of like, it's sort of emerging from the water and it just has all sorts of strange and wonderful, fantastical like creatures and imagery and stuff that doesn't make sense, but I like it anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, just, I really like this artist's style. It just really, it's has a lot of depth and um, the colors used, even though it's, like this one's quite dark, it's still got a lot of beautiful, rich colors in it. So yeah, it's just really nicely done. Um, and then the other one also from the same artist and series. So this is number two and it's called Polar Express. And yeah, it's just beautiful features like these polar bears and being lifted up by a hot air balloon and all sorts of other weird and trippy, like a flying whale and 
or is it a narwhal? Like all sorts of strange and wonderful things. Um, but yeah, I love the colors in this one, like this sort of the gradient in the sky is just, just beautiful. So yeah, definitely another two that will, I think, be in my favorites collection and never leaving my collection. And yeah, just, I can see myself doing these over and over and um, just really enjoying them. So looking forward to those as well. And then, oh, this next one is by Hay. I think that's how you say it. And it's by the artist John Bergman. And I have another one of his with this sort of same style. Pens are not my friend. Ah, so I think the series, he has a series featuring these like little doodle drawing monsters. And I think it's called Pens are not, uh, Pens are my friends, I should say. And this one's called Doodle Skull. So this one is basically like the name suggests, it's a skull, can't see me. Um, and it's just made up of all these like fun and weird little monster creatures that he, like his little monster doodle drawings essentially. So they're all, I just thought it was really fun and colorful. I've been eyeing this one off for quite a while, um, but was like umming and ahhing about it, especially mainly because of the black. I wasn't sure like how fun the sort of black background's gonna be, but I think it'll be okay because actually it's not just plain black. There's all these like other skulls, like, yeah, I don't know if you had to see it, but the black actually has outlines of skulls drawn all over it. So, and they're all a bit different. So that will help, I guess, um, figure out where the pieces go. But yeah, I just, I just really like it. It's just fun and weird and yeah, and it kind of goes with the other puzzle I have of his, which features these sort of quirky little monsters as well. So I think it'll just be fun to do. And then uh, a couple of, I guess, when I saw these next couple on Instagram, I was like, I have to have these. So these next couple are by Ravensburger. So this first one is um, the part of the Ravensburger Crypt series. So, um, and it's 631 pieces. So basically the Crypt series, I think each one, most of them are different. Like there's a black one, which is the hardest, there's a gold and then there's a pink and silver, which are, I think the same, they're just different colors. And then I think this is different again, but essentially they are a rectangle puzzle, but all the puzzle pieces are like weird shapes and don't necessarily go together like a normal puzzle. So you'll get ones that like might be like a weird triangle or a slither or like a rounded, like lots of rounded edges. So you might have some puzzle pieces that are like your standard sort of rectangle puzzle with the, the normal edges, but a lot will be like, it's sort of, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but like even the center is a round piece and then lots of curved pieces and like just lots of weird shaped pieces. And so the idea is that, I mean, obviously you can kind of get, guess what part of it's going to be because you can see it on the box and there's a picture on the back, spoilers, but um, the idea is that I guess you're not really meant to look at it and you've got to see if you can try and figure it out without looking at the box. There's also usually a, like a solution sealed envelope, which shows you like the outline of where everything's supposed to go. But um, so far I've like, I've done the black and the gold, which were really hard and I actually didn't enjoy them that much. Um, but I, did, I managed to do them without looking at the envelope. Although I may have looked at the um, picture on the box slightly Hey, it gets to a point when you do a puzzle that it just becomes unfun and you just want to get it done. But anyway, since the gold and the black are really hard, I wasn't like that keen to do these. But then when I saw that there was a new one and the pattern doesn't look too, too difficult. I think it's on the easier side, but also it's a rainbow gradient. So I tend to find rainbow gradients pretty easy actually. Um, so I'm sort of hoping like the combination, I'm interested to see and I'm hoping the combination of the two will be quite fun and pretty easy, like, because you could almost more or less ignore like the piece shape and just go by the color of the gradient. And then that'll sort of should help you and then, and then use piece shape. Like, so yeah, I'm really interested to see um, how this one's gonna turn out. And I'm actually keen to do a video on this. So stay tuned, there might be a video coming in the next few weeks of doing this one because I'm pretty keen to do it. Um, and so the other one that uh, came out really recently, which caught my eye, probably because it's a rainbow gradient, 
is another Ravensburger one, 1,000 pieces, and it's called. It's part of like their challenge series, which I've never done before. But essentially, the idea is it's just meant to be a bit like imposter puzzles or something like that, where it's just harder. Like the image is meant to be trickier than a standard sort of puzzle image. Um, but yeah, this one's just called. It's just called glitter challenge. But yeah, it just looks kind of simple and fun, and it's a gradient and. Part of me is like, how hard could it be? But I don't know, I've underestimated puzzles before and that's like bitter me in the butt. So, so I'm also keen to do this one. Not sure if I make a video about it or not, maybe. I'll see if I have the time and if I feel like it, but it does look like fun and it looks very pretty. So I don't think it's actually glitter. It's just a photo of glitter as far as I know, because making a glitter puzzle would be messy and weird and probably really expensive, but yeah, definitely looking forward to these last couple rainbow ones. Can't resist a rainbow, especially a rainbow gradient. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's it from everything from Amazon. So I've just got a few from a couple more places, uh, local Australian places. Um, so that shouldn't take too long to go through. So we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so we don't have too many more to go through, just a few more from a couple of companies. So the first company um, is an Australian company, um, well, I'm pretty sure they are, they're JB Hi-Fi, which is kind of a weird place to get puzzles from because uh, here in Australia, JB Hi-Fi is kind of known for selling like music and electronics and like computer games. But I had a friend that um, alerted me to them having a handful of puzzles and um, a couple of very cute ones that were like, I think more than half price, so like very discounted. And um, I'd seen these couple around, so I was like, oh, yes, please, I might grab those since they're on sale. Um, so anyway, the first, the two that I'm talking about that are super cute uh, from Pusheen, the cat. Um, so I think this company, oh, the company that makes them is, I think, Impact Merch. I've sort of heard of them, but I don't think I own any of their puzzles. So this first one is Pusheen and Friends, and it's kind of a, weird size puzzle 460 pieces um so i don't mind it's just cute and it's like yeah pusheen serving up ice cream behind the counter hanging out with its fun cat and sloth and dog and bird friends and it just looks like an all-around good time i mean kind of wish i was there having a giant sunday or something uh, but yeah just cute like pastel colors and just fun and like whimsical and light-hearted like all Pusheen things are so yeah I have quite a few like not any Pusheen puzzles but I have like some t-shirts and merch and stuff so definitely a fan of Pusheen um, so the other Pusheen puzzle is also 460 pieces and it's actually called Dino Sheen so so it's Pusheen as I guess well I don't know it seems like Pusheen is a few of these like dinosaur creatures um, like this weird water one and I don't know, it seems like a weird underground lion with horns. I don't know, like strange, fun and fantastical little dinosaur creatures that all look like they're Pusheen. So again, looks fun, it's cute, whimsical, fun little colors. Just a fun puzzle to do in the afternoon or something with such a small piece count. So yeah, no idea what the quality of this brand is like. Um, I not, I don't have high expectations. Um, but we'll see, maybe it's good, kind of like, I don't know, the boxes themselves feel like they have these little handles, but apart from that, the cardboard feels kind of flimsy, so it feels a little bit on the cheaper side, but so we'll see, not sure what to expect, but hey, they were, they were like really inexpensive, so at this point I am not too bothered about what the quality is like, it's more just a fun little project to do. And then the other one I also got from JB Hi-Fi is the Simpsons um crusty a uh, frosted crusty o so it's like the puzzle is of like the i guess front of like the crusty cereal box um so i just thought that was fun and it was like super on sale as well and is this oh yeah also from impact merch this one feels like the box and the puzzle feel a bit more sturdy so maybe i don't know if the quality is different um oh this is a thousand did i mention this is a thousand pieces i think maybe I think so. So, um, yeah, I don't know if like this one's going to be sometimes companies, their different piece counts vary in quality. 
so we'll see what it's like but yeah it was pretty inexpensive and just looks like good fun and I mean who doesn't love the Simpsons and Krusty the Clown and so yeah I think it would just be a bit of a fun time to do this um, so that's all I got from JB Hi-Fi um, which I just like I just ordered it online and it was pretty convenient and then the last company I ordered puzzles from was from the Jigsaw store, which is actually located in Sydney. Um, usually when we're not in a lockdown, I can actually go pick them up um, for free. So I don't have to pay like a shipping fee or anything. I'll just go to the premises, which is sort of like close to our city and pick them up, which saves me like a $10 shipping fee or whatever. Um, but at the moment, they're only, uh, they're not doing that because of like lockdown. So I did have to get these shipped, but it was very quick and convenient. So no complaints there. Um, and yeah, they always have, um, they seem to just have a really interesting mix of puzzles. Like they'll have some of your standard brands like Ravensburger and I don't know, like what else? Oh, they won't have Buffalo, but they'll have like a lot of British brands or like uh, European brands. And they have Australian brands too, like Holdson and um, Funbox, but then they'll have like random weird interesting brands that kind of pop up that you don't see all the time even on amazon i don't really see them anyway so i got a few things from there um none of these were like oh there was a couple that was sort of in sale they weren't strictly on sale but they were like at a reasonable price i thought especially for what they were and also i just really like the look of these puzzles so the first one is just weird and bizarre also another cereal box puzzle which is kind of weird that I got two cereal puzzles. Um, so this is like, this is actually by Gibson's, which I thought was really unusual. Normally they don't really make puzzles like this, but it's a 500 piece double sided. So one side is the, the, the cereal box front, I guess. And then the other side is, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but I try and put a photo. Um, it's basically like, what is it? Um, Oh, like a kind of collage of different ads from like through the years of cornflakes, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I grew up with cornflakes. Definitely something I used to have a lot as a kid and just thought this was like a weird quirky thing. I'm not usually that into like brand kind of puzzles, but I don't know. Just something about its quirkiness appealed to me. So here we are. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to see if this is like the same quality as like a couple of the other puzzles I have of theirs which is very nice quality so um, I've never done a 500 piece of theirs especially not a cereal box double-sided one so yeah be fun to see what it's like um, so next is one from a brand I've never tried before so okay I think this is how you say it Deco Deco D-J-E-C-O and I think it's a French brand but I can't say it apparently, but anyway, um, this is a 500 piece one and it's called Unicorn Garden and it's, it comes in a very nice, like nicely decorated sturdy box. Um, I have no idea what the piece is like, but it feels pretty like hefty. Um, and this is a, again, like a long landscape puzzle. So almost like makes me think of a tapestry. Um, so the, because of the imagery, um, it's like, these are not normally my colors, these sort of browny, more grungy colors, but it's got like unicorns and what has it got on? Like sort of princessy looking people and fairies and flowers and like a forest. And yeah, and it looks like it's sort of three panels. So there's like a giant center panel and then two side ones. Hence why I say it sort of reminds me of like an old fashioned sort of tapestry, like the lady and the unicorn or something like that. Um, but yeah, really intrigued by this one. Um, like I said, never done this brand before. I'm not sure what the quality is like, but this image and puzzle really appealed to me. I just thought it looked really interesting, both the art style and the the actual art, like the artwork itself, and that it's like a landscape. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what this one's like. Um, looks beautiful. I'm hoping the quality of the pieces is as good as the quality of the box because the box is really nice. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one. And another one I got from them is from Suns Out. Um, I've never done Suns Out, but I do actually own, I think, one other puzzle of theirs, which I haven't done. It's just sitting in my to-do pile. Um, I 
think it's a US brand. Does it say, oh yeah, made in the USA. Um, this one is appealed to me because it's of the game Mahjong. So it's sort of like all this, I used to play this Mahjong computer game when I was a kid. So it's a bit nostalgic for me. I like totally sucked at it, never knew what I was doing, but always had fun doing it because every time you moved a piece off the screen, like a, like a wind piece or something, it'd make a little wind sound or water sound. I don't know, it was just weird and fun and didn't know what I was doing, but I enjoyed it anyway. So um, I've never actually played like the actual Mahjong tile set, um, but yeah, I just thought I really liked the sort of vintage style of this one. Not sure how PC this one is, like with the imagery, but um, yeah, so that could be slightly questionable, but I really like the sort of Mahjong tiles and some of the old sort of vintage kind of like illustrations that are used. It's sort of like a collage type one. Um, yeah, so interested to see what that's like and what the Suns Out quality is like. Also, these Suns Out boxes are like super weird. Like, why are they so big and flat and I don't know, strange, but I don't know, kind of weird, but I don't know, I like it. So yeah, curious to try that. And then the last one I got from uh, Jigsaw Store is a Treffle one and it's part of their Funny Cities series. So I have like their New York one, which I, um, I'm not sure if that was in the last haul, but basically it's like New York, but it has like cats all through the city. So this is part of that series, except no cats that I can see, but this is Venice and it's like all desserts. So um, yeah, like it's just like, instead of the canal being your normal water, it's like, I guess pink, like icing or milkshake or something like that. And like, I don't know, I don't think Venice normally has hot air balloons, but now it does. And they're made, of, made from cupcakes and other weird and wonderful things. And yeah, you got icing on the dome and yeah, so I don't know, it looks pretty silly and fun. It was stupid and weird and it appealed to me. Um, what else? There's a few others in the series, like there's like a Paris one, which also has like sweets and stuff. And there's a London one, which has like dogs and corgis. And But yeah, this one, this just looked fun and it's pink and I like pink and I just thought it looked like a cool puzzle. Don't know about that sky though. It looks like it might be a bit boring, but yeah. It was fun, so I grabbed it. Yeah, so that's um, everything I got from um, for the September haul. Um, not quite as many as the August haul, but still a fair few, I think. Um, so I guess let me know what you thought of my haul. Are there any here that um, are on your wish list um, or any that you've got yourself that you've tried? Um, you know, let me know if you've tried some of these brands that I haven't and tell me what they're like. Um, yeah, and what's, you know, what's on your current wish list? Anything that you've had your eye on that you're hoping to get soon? Um, yeah, so anyway, thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby. Um, thanks again and see you next time. Bye.